In this episode, what do your push-ups say about your chesticles? <laughs> the sun is shining, the birds are chirping, the bacon is sizzling. Welcome to the Daily Swole. Welcome, everyone, to episode 211 of The Daily Mother Swo. Got a lot of stuff going on today. Welcome to all my new premium members that signed up this week. I hope you are tuning in today because we are going live right after this in premium as well. Today is all about push-ups. We're going to talk about chest. We're going to talk about building those chesticles, if you will. And uh, yeah, let's see. If you're checking out my Facebook page, make sure you check out the pin post at the top. Swole Normous Gear. Swole Normous Gear is live. We got men's shirts, women's shirts. We have hoodies. Got, got freaking got coffee mugs. So we got tanks, everything, different colors, navy, pink, black, whatever you want. Whatever you want to rock. And of course, you the, the moment you put it on, your beard and your hair just grow. So you'll look just like me when you wear a shirt, just like me. So make sure you check out the main Facebook page for that information. So thank you for joining me live here on Facebook and also on YouTube, SoundCloud, and iTunes. Thank you for joining. Push-ups, what your push-ups say about yo chesticles. Yeah, Kaylin got her tank. I know. The, shirt, the shirts look really awesome. The shirts look really awesome. I'm so excited. So if you haven't checked it out, uh, it's pinned to the top of my Facebook page. And I also posted about it on Snapchat and Instagram. So um, you can check out the website. If you click uh, shop now on the link in the Facebook page, it'll take you right to uh, the website. So push-up variations. What your push-ups say about yo chesticles. I'm going to break down four different types of push-ups. Now, there's all those little fancy ones, the jumping push-ups. There's a lot of different subtle variations. And remember, as I'm talking about these, your personal preferences are going to vary. It depends on your joint structure, depends on injuries, depends on your ability to do push-ups. I'm not breaking down how to do a push-up. If you can't, I've done an episode on that, and I'll talk about that another time. This is not whether you should do push-ups from your knees or from your toes. We could talk more about that in premium after this broadcast. Right now, I'm talking about hand positioning. Hand positioning, whether you go narrow or regular, wide, and I'll even throw in something about diamond push-ups and discuss a little bit about uh, the arm position. So the regular push-up, the regular standard push-up, as you'll know, is just arms, you know, just down and up, down and up. Your hands are a little bit wider than your shoulders and your elbows are flared out maybe 90 or a little bit less than 90 degrees from the, from the rib cage, from the torso. The average standard push-up. Once you start adjusting your hand position, what you're essentially doing is either changing the pressure on the triceps or you are moving the humerus, which is the upper arm bone, and you're moving that around and you're changing the stress on the chest. So really what it comes down to is every time you adjust your position of your body, every time you adjust the position of your body, you're not making, I, I want to say you're not making it harder or easier per se, but you're changing which muscles are working in what capacity. You're either making the chest work less and you're putting more pressure on the triceps, so you'll feel it in the triceps more. Or you're taking pressure off the triceps, so you'll feel it in the chest more or the anterior deltoid. And there's no bad push-up. There's no bad push-up because if you think about it, and what's really popular nowadays in fitness is to talk about functional exercise. It's to talk about things that are functional for the body. And what does functional mean? It means the, the exercise and the movement relates to real life movement. So if you're in the gym and you're doing exercise A, B, or C, those are movements that mimic things that you'll do in your life. For example, a push-up, you're getting up off the ground if you're cleaning under the bed. Or a deadlift, you're lifting something off the ground, you're putting it away. You know, lifting it to your shoulders and putting it up on a shelf. It's like a, a, a barbell clean. So there's a lot of different exercise that can relate to a real life movement. And if you do these things in the gym and you practice, you get stronger, it should make 
and it will make your daily life easier, more effective, more efficient, less risk of injury. You're less likely to pull a muscle because you're used to your body has been training for that kind of overload. So when you actually do it in real life, it's easier. And these are the things that people don't normally talk about with fitness as much when you're younger because we talk about, you know, wanting to look sexy, wanting to have abs, wanting to have muscles, wanting to have an amazing, you know, the amazing sheen on your beard. We all talk about that all the time. But what you don't talk about is how these things are going to help your life now and in the future and forever. Because before you know it, you're going to be a lot older and things are not going to be as easy, as easy for you. So as you age, and I've trained a lot of people, a lot of geriatric population, 70, 80, even 90, you start to notice, I mean, and, and that's me, me, I notice the things that I want that's more important I notice more about the things that are important in life, not just now, but in the future. So right now, and I've talked about this, I'm focusing less on throwing as much weight as possible on the bar and more on, even more so on muscle contraction, higher, you know, reps to failure, really getting that full volume and that pump and developing muscle size and mass, but with less literal overload because stress in the joints will catch up to you, promise. Killed it on the bench press yesterday, sore as shit. Yeah, my chest is sore. My legs are wrecked. My legs are wrecked. And um, I'm going to have that leg workout video up on YouTube in the next few days, and it's nasty. It was just my legs <laughs> My legs are crushed. My legs are crushed. So regular push-ups gets a little bit of everything. It's a little bit of the anterior deltoid, the front of the shoulder, and it gets the chest, and it gets the triceps. Fine. They work synergistically. It's mostly a chest movement. And push-ups, great. All the way down, all the way up, no bouncing, no half reps, no pulsing, no, you know, boing, 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 you know, how many push-ups can I do in a minute military-style bullshit? We're talking full-blown, no momentum. Momentum does not build muscle. I believe it was Arnold that famously said that. You cannot build muscle with momentum. You need to control. Your muscle needs to do the work. Anytime you get explosive movement where you're just accelerating the weight and you're just bouncing off the tendons and you're using just that spring elastic component of the tendons and the joints and ligaments, you are not controlling the weight. You're not controlling your muscle. You're not developing and breaking down your muscle. So the muscle is not going to be what gets the most, you know, you might get number, oh, I got 80 push-ups. Yeah, but you look skinny. So if you want to really develop the muscle more, you need to make sure the muscle does all the work. So let's talk about narrow push-up. So a narrow push-up will be when you bring your arms in and you tuck your elbows in by your sides. These are commonly called military push-ups. Because the humerus, because you're bringing the humerus in close to the rib cage, you are limiting the amount of stretch that many fibers of the pectorals will get. When your elbows are out to the side more, you'll get more of a stretch with most fibers. When you bring your elbows in, you get more of the anterior deltoid and the tricep. So it's not so much that you're not going down and up, doesn't mean that you're not going the same distance towards the ground and back up. What it means is your chest, the angle, the angle of action where the humerus is relative to the body will hit the chest fibers in general a lot less than the triceps and the deltoid. Doesn't mean you're not working your chest at all. Doesn't mean you're not going to get chest development. Doesn't mean you shouldn't do this exercise. It just means that it's a different shade. If you are a mechanic, if you're a painter, if you do any type of any work, you have multiple tools. This is one of those tools on their knuckles ones. Yeah, knuckles, I mean, that's just, doing push-ups on your knuckles is just another, uh, it doesn't change your joint position. It just puts pressure on your knuckles and it makes it a little bit more stressful on the knuckles and I, I, I have nothing really to say about that. It might actually be better for some people and that's where push-up handles come into play because push-up handles keep the wrist neutral and sometimes people have wrist problems and when you put their your hands flat, it can put pressure on the wrist, so. There's not a negative necessary to that, but you know there's not a lot of covering on the knuckles, and for most people that would be painful. But it doesn't change the push-up or what muscle it works at all. Wide push-ups. This is actually my favorite type of push-up, and I think it's underdone. Uh, a wide push-up is where your hands are, let's say, standard position, a little bit wider than your, a little bit wider than the shoulders, and then you go about a hand width wider. And the reason why that's excellent is because once you push all the way up, your arms are on angle out to the sides. And I'm going to demonstrate these movements after in premium. So those of you that are in premium, stay tuned after this because I'm going to demonstrate and show you a little bit more, um, show you a couple reps on each exercise, and then you can get a little bit more insight into what exactly I'm talking about. When you're doing a wide push-up at the top, there's more of that isometric hold. So if your hands are out wider and you're out to the side, you're chest muscles have to stabilize the shoulder a lot more. Your chest muscles have to stabilize the shoulder a lot more at the top of the contraction. 
if your hands are about shoulder width or they're a little bit closer at the top, it's almost like your body is resting on the joints. It's like holding a base, you know, something straight up in the air. It weighs less than when you turn it sideways, like a baseball bat or a golf club. You hold it sideways, it's harder because it's more torque. When you're at the top of a push up, a standard push up, the joints are stacked over the wrist and it's less difficult to maintain that high plank position. If you do yoga, this is also referred to as a high plank, just a, st a starting push-up position at the top. But when your arms are wider, your arms, your chest muscles are also working to stabilize the shoulder so you don't fall down and land on your face. I can do them on my knuckles, feels like a waste of time. Yeah, it hurts your knuckles. I mean, you know, if you're boxing, if you do fighting, it can toughen up your knuckles and make them less sensitive, so that could be benefit. But the wide push-up, you wouldn't do a wide push-up from your knuckles per se, but a wide push-up will get the chest a lot more and a lot less of the anterior deltoid, a uh, little bit less tricep. Mostly it takes out the tricep when you do a wide push-up. So if you haven't done wide push-ups ever or you haven't tried, you know, you haven't tried or you don't do them that often, I encourage you to try them a lot more because if you're working out a home and if you need an exercise that's going to target the chest more I really 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 recommend doing wide push-ups it'd be great even do a superset doing regular and wide push-ups that'd be nasty too so the last one I want to talk about are the diamond push-ups so you bring your hands really close in this one is going to be the least taxing on the chest and it's gonna be the most taxing on the triceps a little bit more on the shoulders as well, but when you bring your hands in, if you really squeeze at the top and squeeze the chest, you can get a little bit more of the inner part of the chest because when your hands are close at the top, it'll allow you to squeeze the humerus in a lot, but there isn't a lot of tension. So this is where it's gonna be chest and triceps, but a lot more triceps. The wide push-up will be a lot more chest, and then you have the narrow will also be a lot more anterior deltoid and also triceps. So the regular push-up, get a little bit of everything, but then the other ones will start shifting the stress. And it's all because of what position the elbow or the humerus is relative to the body. Push-ups are great for home exercise. They're great for gym exercise too. Uh, my Swolnormous program, uh, fitness programs have push-ups. I love using push-ups as part of the program, of course, in addition to resistance training. It's great for home use. They're great to build endurance. And if you aren't into fitness and you're just getting into it, it's great to get started. It's great to get started. You'll need a lot of heavy, heavy weights right off, especially if you have little to no experience. If you have little to no experience, you need to build your, you need to build your exposure up. And push-ups are a great way to get your body used to working to failure, used to that overload, used to that consistency. If, especially if you don't have access to a gym, it can definitely get you going. Or if you can only go to a gym two or three times a week, the other days you can still get your fitness in and allows you to keep consistent to more consistent program and filter in body weight exercise with resistance training exercises. So it'll get you started and it will help you build endurance. So don't think because you might not have the money to do it, to join a gym. You might not have the time. You might not have the ability or the expertise or you're too embarrassed. First off, these are things you have to get over, like the embarrassment of going to a public facility. These are things that you need to overcome, but you can still get results and you can get great workouts at home. And remember, you can always do half and half. You can make it to the gym some days, other days. You could plan your schedule and make sure that you are staying to your schedule if you implement push-ups and implement these types of workouts and exercises you could do anywhere. Uh, so it could be literally anywhere. You could drop down at the bank or at the supermarket. Not that you would, but push-ups are great. They're done anywhere. Try this. Try this. If you've never done push-ups, you've never done a lot of push-ups, never tried some of the ones I just mentioned, try doing max push-ups without touching the ground and see how many you can do. I'll give you no time limit. Just make sure that you don't touch your knees to the ground. If you want to hold at the top and catch your breath for a couple seconds, it doesn't, doesn't have to be continuous, nonstop, up and down. But if you want to pause the top, catch your breath a couple minutes or a couple seconds and then do another rep, but don't let your knees touch the ground. Do full push-ups. Do as many as you can and see how many you can do without touching the ground. Even if you have to rest for a couple seconds at the top, see how many you can do. If you can't do a push-up from your toes, you can see how many you're doing continuously without pausing at all from your knees. But if you can't do a push-up from your toes, make sure that you check out how to do a push-up, one of my daily swoles. I do not have the number right now, but what I'll do is I will link in the description when I post it up on YouTube. Uh, but make sure that you check through the daily swoles. There is There are some great, I think it might be in the, in the 40s, daily swell 40 or 50, where I talk about how to do a push-up if you can't do a push-up. And that's one of the one of the best things, one of the best episodes because most people 
can't do a full push-up, and that's super important to be able to, to handle your body weight. So thank you for joining me for episode 211 of The Daily Mother Swole, how your push-ups affect your chesticles. So right now, in the next couple minutes, make sure that you stay tuned. Uh, premium members, I will be going live and premium, and I'll be demonstrating some of these movements. If you are not a member of Solnormous Premium, I encourage you to join up. You can click the sign up button on my Facebook page, and it will take you right to sign up. It's $9.99 a month, and we do follow-ups on the Daily Swole, applications, exercise, live broadcast like I'm going to do right now, and a lot of the Information that comes in here in the Daily Swole gets a lot more in depth and how you apply it uh, to your to your routine and how you get how to get started. It's a great time of year. Holidays coming up, bad habits coming up, and let's get started now. Don't wait till January first. Swollen morning, bro. Boom. <laughs> What's going on? So, um, and the great thing about uh, Premium, we have weekly accountability meetings on Monday after the Daily Swole. We have uh, it, it's it's a, it's a great community. So it'll keep you on track. Everything gets broken down, and this is what it's going to be like today, uh, Q&A, and also demonstration of these push-up exercises. So follow me over there into premium members, uh, those of you that are watching me live. And also, get your Swolnormous gear. It's pinned to the top of my Facebook page. So it'll take you right to the link where you can get your T-shirts, your tanks, different color tanks, coffee mugs, hoodies, lots of cool stuff, and get ready for some more vids today, vlogs, and also Spotlight Sundays tomorrow. This is a big weekend. Got a lot of stuff going on. Thanks for joining me. See you tomorrow at 12 noon Eastern time. Deuce.